Drac, I'm working with a Vetra to track down prosthetic gel and those other items we discussed. You're too good to be Doc. Nothing for me. Playing favorites, Lexi? What? No. <laughs> those remnant vaults, all those secrets. I have to go exploring in one someday. Imagine flying through one. Now that would be a real hazard course. Hey guys, thought I'd check in before I leave. Any new updates with you guys? Hello, Gil. When are you cleaning up that repair on the sensor console? I'm not. It's a redesign. A redesign? Without a trained crew? I'm trained and it's working great. Don't be so uptight. Everything okay? No. Oh, fine. Fine. Don't worry about it. What can I do for you? I couldn't help overhearing you and Gil. It sounded pretty heated. He likes redesigning things, but the ship was built this way for a reason. I wish Gil would respect that. It's nothing to concern yourself about, really. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Well, I can't talk about Suvi. She's sitting right there. I'm not listening. You can say whatever you like. Oh no, I'm not falling for that again. I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. Not falling for that again, huh? How'd you fall for it once, exactly? Did she tell you that humans can turn their ears off like androids? Scans of the Scourge. All that dark energy twisting and turning on itself. It's splendid. I suppose it is a rather darkly beautiful phenomenon. Darkly beautiful. I like that. Helios is incredible, isn't it? Not just constructs like the Scourge and the Remnant Vaults. Just all of it. So alien. A constant reminder of the divine intelligence behind all creation. You mean... a god? Yes. I believe in a higher power. I know it's a little odd. But I am a scientist because science brings me closer to something greater than myself. There's nothing about the universe that suggests a divine intelligence. And most of what we've seen in Helios is artificial, as you said yourself. Yes, but we're creative beings. Whoever made the Remnant was too. Why should that be proof against a god? Wouldn't a true creator want to pass on the drive to invent? You are welcome to your beliefs. It's good to have different voices on the team. Excellent. Oh, speaking of the team, I should update the folks back in the Nexus with the latest reports. We'll talk later. I wonder if you could pull like a really 180, a really weird 180 by like, uh, like being like, oh yeah, I totally feel the same way. Don't believe in God on my ship. Because <laughs> there's a, there's a two stage thing and I wonder if the same, I wonder if the second stage has the same options if you pick something different in the first stage. I saw pictures of the vault. Astounding how big it is. And how much of it didn't you see? What if it's way bigger? What's all that space for? Wild remnant parties. What else would you use it for? Well, that's a thought. You don't really think they... Oh, joking. I see. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> What do you know about the Remnant's terraforming network? From what I can tell, the vault is designed to adjust almost everything about a planet. Climate, pH of the soil, atmosphere composition. There's even evidence that it can propagate life. If we can figure out how to control the vaults, we could turn these worlds into perfect habitats. When did you start believing in a god? My parents were both scientists. My home was ruled by rationality. So when I became a teenager, Let's just say that while other kids find Batarian music, I found God. But your work as a scientist... Convinced me even more, especially when I got into molecular biology, physics. The patterns I kept seeing over and over again, they were like an artist's watermarks. God, to me, is an artist. An inventor, not someone checking to see if I brush my teeth. I should get back to things. Sounds good. Hey Suvi, can you maybe go give uh, go give Addison some uh, some some makeup advice, just a little? 
I don't know. Maybe it's because maybe it's being washed out by all the blue, the orange light in here. Maybe that's maybe her makeup's not as good either. I don't know. But damn, <laughs> her face generally blends nicely-ish, I guess. Whereas like Addison is like a nightmare creature, and someone needs to tell her. No one's telling her. Why is no one telling her? I almost feel bad. Like someone should have told her, right? Naming the dead in research center development. Uh, we'll come back here later. I mean, I'll, I'll be coming back either way because we're waiting for stuff to. Something. What? What are we picking up? We're waiting over there for. Um, we're waiting for the radiation to clear, so I'll come back regardless. So I'm not uh, too concerned about loose ends. Should I take a look at one of these places? Just a little bit. It's like I'm playing No Man's Sky all over again. I wonder if that was the inspiration at all. To have, like, such a similar concept. Oh, weird. Oh, weird. They take into account whether or not you invert controls in first-person mode. Weird. Weird. That's super weird. Sorry, I'm distracted by that over everything else. I'm not even paying attention to anything that's indicating where to go. Am I supposed to go this way? They're kind of lighting up more. What are those things? I'm not entirely sure what to make of the sensors. Should I try the other side of the planet, perhaps? So I, I invert controls during in first-person shooters and third-person shooters and stuff. Now I'm starting to think those lights don't mean anything, because they just seem to be changing randomly. Huh. But yeah, I, in I invert controls, but normally, uh, a game like... Normally, in a, when you get to a menu, or any sort of cursor, it does not invert. Uh, but in this game, it inverts. Like, my pl like the planet scanning in Mass Effect 2 and 3 did not invert, just because I inverted my y-axis in shooting. But it did here. I actually can't really tell if those things are supposed to be telling me where to go, or if there even is anything to scan in the first place. Huh. Anomaly on sensors. Was I just supposed to click on it and be like, I scanned it, and that's it? Huh. Let's go to the Nexus. Before I do anything else right now. Head right back over there. Do I ever get to thaw out my sister? Come on. Please? Please? I may need to, I may need to tweak my settings again. Familiar territory. The Nexus has been here for months. Still not enough time to survey it all. Oh, so this even the Nexus system is un Yep, it is a uh, on sensors. It is unsensed in general. All right. But yeah, I I mean to tweak the settings again cuz uh in general gameplay the game runs at 60 frames per second, I think, even on my high settings that I've changed it to now. It seems to be working out now. But uh during conversations, it drops like crazy, actually. Probably because of alternate textures it loads for conversations for faces. Seems to be chugging a little bit. By chugging, I mean like dropping to like 40 frames per second as opposed to 60. It's not exactly running at 10. Whoa. It vibrated like we actually collided with it. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional. Look at that. We have a ton of stuff to do here, apparently. Well, get ready for another 10 episodes of the Nexus, like last time, apparently. Uh, I hope not, but... <laughs> ah! Startling. I guess if we stop that violently, that might explain why it, uh... Why the camera shook when we arrived here. It is a pretty place, at least. Well, we're back. Vetri, am I getting some trouble for the strings you were pulling? She was in such a hurry to get off that place. Pathfinder, is it true? We're settling Eos. We thought that before. But Eos is different now, right? Pathfinder. All right, settle down. Give him space. Lieutenant Syax, Kendros's aide. They all wanted to see you. Real hope again. 
It's been a while. They've got a Pathfinder again. This is what we do. And you've done it splendidly. Professor Herrick, right? What you achieve with that remnant vault is unprecedented, Pathfinder. Impossible. But with new scientific talent waking up, we'll unravel those mysteries. The whole Nexus will benefit. August Bradley will oversee that. He's the new mayor. Bradley. I know him. Seems like a good man. Well, what are you waiting for? There's a new world out there. Thank you, Ryder. Weird camera angle. In one of those moments, my character was out of focus and the background was in focus. I'm like, why is that happening? Am I supposed to look in the background? You saw what happened to the Krogan. But we need this equipment. Well, you're not getting it. Stop making frivolous requests. It's not a frivolous request. Properly functioning air filters are at... Frivolous. You'll just have to make do. We can't fix the station breathing bad air. Just like that, our first ever female Solarian, I think. Your incompetence isn't my problem. Just do your job. What do you want? Sounds like you're having a rough day. You saw that, huh? Oh, I'm sorry I snapped at you. The way Spender treats me? Everyone, I'm just... I'm so angry. I don't understand how he's in any position of authority. He was pretty abusive towards you. Is that... normal? Yes, he's horrible. Working with him is a total nightmare. Just last week, he tried to redirect some of the supplies we need to keep the stasis pods going. Why? I have no idea. But if Kesh hadn't stepped in and threatened to airlock him, it would have been a disaster. He's always like that. Making bad decisions, driving the Krogan away, treating people like scum when no one's watching. You'd think your boss would have the power to do something. She hates Spender, but there's only one of her. And she can't always be around to deal with him. Things have gotten so bad that Kesh had to literally kick him out of engineering. How literal are we talking here? Boot to ass. Oh, it was glorious. We need him gone, but as incompetent as Spender is at his job, he's insanely good at keeping it. Kesh can tell you more. He's, so he's actively abusive and... Did I hear that right about the stasis pods? Is he trying to, like, straight up kill people in their pods? Like, just sacrifice people for resources? Seems like he might be straight up dangerous at some point. I've never been here before, have I? Let's look at the map. This is a new map, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think I've been here before. Did I have the option to come here before and did I miss it or something? No, I think when I went to... I don't remember. That's ridiculous. Why would you say that? Huh. Maybe he thought he was being honest. Maybe there wasn't much going on here and I just ran through it. I don't remember. There's definitely stuff going on around here now. There's a Vena again. Don't. Don't shove the crate off the... You shove the crate off the ramp. Where do they find these people? No. We're done. Keeping tabs on things back here? Yeah, I try to watch what's going on while we're away, but it's nice to check in person. I can't believe you said that. What? I was just being honest. Going well, I hope. As well as it can go with limited resources, yeah. Tiny steps. Damn, Ryder, you just missed a good show. One of the alarms malfunctioned, and we thought it was an attack. It didn't take long to figure it out, but in that time, they managed to scramble at least half the station's defenses. Why are the alarms still malfunctioning? Probably a leftover issue from when the Scourge fried know, systems. It's not that bad. I once worked in a building with a fire alarm that would glitch every other week. I can't believe you said that. What? I was just you ever just think I miss home? Every time I do, I feel guilty about it. The consumption or sale of any plant Dan just came through here on a tear. Have you ever seen a Solarian power walking? Hilarious. So you can kind of keep tricking dialogue, but it's uh, it stops it stops being full dialogue and stops starts being him just her just shouting lines. 
But you can't hear her past other people in the area. Or you can't read her subtitles, I mean. You're not my party member, right? No, you're not. Just just look similar in distance. There's a lot there's a lot of people talking around here. Is this customs? Oh god, I knew it. Welcome to the I come all this way to die. Take it easy. It's an earache caused by a minor infection. Some immune systems need to adjust to the new environment. Oh. Right. I always was allergic to everything. It's not serious enough to deny entry. You want to see our medical staff, but otherwise, good luck. Next. It is immigration. So they must still be bringing in people from the human arc. And I guess that guy's a bit of a hypochondriac and thinks he's straight up going to die. Moira Purcell, security system specialist. But I didn't come alone. My son should be here. Was he on the Hyperion? Yes. He's an agriculturalist. Hmm. That's odd. Prodromos is being set up as a science center. He ought to be in the first wave deployment. You're on the Universal Wake Up roster. When will he wake up? Hi, I'm, Gar I'm sure he'll be among the next group survived out of stasis. Oh, good. That's a relief. You can wait for further instructions over there. She has been typing non stop. Impressive, almost. So that's some single minded, minded dedication staring at a Venus ass. <laughs> oh, what's over here? Cultural Center. It's a new one. Can I see who runs this place? Not a very well framed photo, to be honest. That one's better. What are you? A hologram of. Okay, weird how you can't see what you are. I wonder if it's supposed to be Shepard or someone. Those almost might be past characters, so I kind of wonder if that one might be Shepard, but they're all screwed up because you don't know what, what Shepard looks like. Turian VI. It's an honor to meet you, citizen of Andromeda. My people are the Turians. It will be a privilege to tell you about them. Okay. Turians are a highly disciplined race who value service to others. No one places personal needs ahead of the greater whole. Public works serve as a focal point of our society. We believe it's our duty to better our species. Where do you come from? Turians live on a planet known as Power. The atmosphere's weak magnetic field shaped our evolution into the life form you see today. Our signature carapace, the hard exterior shell you see on Turians, is actually metal. It protects us from the intense rays of power and sun. What's Turian history like? The history of my people is proof that peace eventually wins out. Disagreements among species turned into lasting friendships. When Turians first met humans, there was a misunderstanding between us that could have had disastrous consequences. But with patience and restraint, humans and Turians eventually joined together in a mutually beneficial partnership. We look forward to doing the same in Andromeda. The pleasure of meeting you has been mine. One that I hope other Turians will soon enjoy. Did he? First of all, that guy disappears entirely, but it becomes a floating uh, data pad, which is amusing to see. Did he? He said their carapace is straight up metal. Is that what he said? Huh? Was that always true? I'm I'm trying to remember whether or not I knew that already and forgot at some point because in my more recent playthroughs I don't really go through the codex again. Or if I just never knew that, or if it wasn't established before. I'm not sure. That sounds crazy, though, to have a... Have a straight-up uh, metal body. So, I guess you're supposed to be the human VI, aren't you? And you're not available because I am human. And that'd be, like, a little weird. That looks... No, that's a human up there. Huh. Maybe he'll show up later. Or maybe he's my VI. I don't know. is a place of friendship and cooperation. Thanks for stopping by. I'm a drunk. Are you interested in hearing more about my people? Okay. Of course you are. We may look scary, but don't let that worry you. It comes from living on a harsh world. We're a species that knows how to thrive, even under the worst conditions. 
Where do you come from? Anomaly Rock, called Tichanka. No sense lying. It's not a planet most people want to visit. We had predators, nasty weather, and not much else. But it gave us our identity, forced us to adapt and evolve. Everything about us is built for survival. How many species do you know that have a pair of spare lungs just in case? Or four testicles? Okay, I get that it's like a fan service thing, but maybe don't just straight up bring that up just for at random people. I know it's like the one weird obscure piece of of, uh, of weird trivia about Krogan like body parts, but I don't know if they'd just lead things off with the cultural center by just straight up telling random people about that of all things. What's Krogan history like? Kind of hard to, uh... Kind of hard to, uh... To have a fresh start, though, with the genophage making it so that you can't reproduce, and now there's so few of you on this trip that would be even harder to have a sustainable population with an even smaller overall population trying to reproduce and then a smaller chances of overall success. They say they're kind of fixing it a little bit, but even that explanation was weird, and it sounded like a kind of plot convenience. Like, they're doing gene therapy, but they're doing gene therapy on, like, what? People who are in stasis? Who's doing the gene therapy? How do they know how to do gene therapy? Do they have the cure for the genophage already? Who came up with that cure that they're using for the gene therapy? This takes place too early for Malon's, Malin's data to be have, have reached it or anything like that. And who's monitoring the gene therapy if it's happening while they're in stasis? But if, if stasis stops you from aging, then how are they even doing gene therapy? Because don't you like... I'm not, how does gene therapy even work? Don't you modify some of their DNA? Doesn't it have to like spread throughout their body in some way? How is it spreading through their body if their body's in stasis and not aging and not doing anything? Like how could you even do continual therapy when they're in stasis? I don't don't know if any of that explanation works necessarily. It kind of felt like a hand wave plot convenience of, uh, yeah, genophage kind of screws up the whole reason Je Krogan are here, but if we ignore it, then, you know. Welcome, native of Andromeda. My people are known as Asar. It would be my pleasure to tell you about our god. Okay. Very well. Asar are the oldest civilized race in the Milky Way galaxy. Among my people, diplomacy and cooperation are prized over war or conflict. Where do you come from? Asar come from a planet known as Thessia, which many consider the crown jewel of the Milky Way. It's a thriving world blessed with prosperity and peace, and the center of the largest economy in the galaxy. With the high concentration of element zero on Thessia, Asari evolved powerful biotic abilities. It is considered a hallmark of our species. What's Asari history like? Thousands of years ago, we played an important role in founding the Citadel Council, the seat of government for our home galaxy. In the ensuing centuries, Asari placed great value on cooperation and collaboration. Many species look to us for leadership and guidance. Due to our lifespan, sometimes reaching 1,000 years of age, we are patient in our decisions and prefer long-term solutions over short-term gains. Farewell. We look forward to forging new bonds with our friends in Andromeda. The wisdom you share is our reward. We fucking rock, and we're the kings of the universe, and we're the best out of anybody. Our planet's a fucking shithole. That's a, that's the that's the out that's the output derived from these people so far. That's that's great. That's great. But yeah, the uh, the main reason I take issue with stuff like that, with the gene therapy stuff, is just that it's it's up there with the uh, Quarian ship and the Geth Mass Effect telescope, where it's just. It's the kind of things where, uh, in Mass Effect 1, if that kind of thing is brought up, they'd have, like, a big detailed explanation of it, usually, to make it make sense. But in this game, they 
throw out something like that, like that sounds like the thesis statement of a paper you're about to read, and then they stop and like, wait, no, no, where's the ther where's the where's the description that makes that thing you just said make sense? And like, no, nope, we're stopping there. I'm like, no, but you could try to make this make sense, but you just barely, barely, barely acknowledged it. So I have to only interpret it based on what I know so far, and I don't know if your explanation works. But you could make it work if you said more, but you didn't. And that's where I, that's where I stand with a lot of the weird like, clashes with the existing universe stuff that comes up where I'm like, what? No, what'd you say? What? No, you need to expand on that. No? Okay, we're gone forever. Okay, probably not going to talk about that ever again, are we? All right. This is an image of the Citadel, considered the seat of government for many civilized races in the Milky Way galaxy. Here, the Council deliberates on matters of state. It is a champion of the common citizen, eager to help those in need. As with all political institutions in the Milky Way, conflict is rare. Peace and cooperation are the rule of the day. Yep, these are some whitewashed as shit visions of the current universe. Well, the universe from six, 600 years ago. Greetings, inhabitant of Andromeda. I'm a Solarian. I'd be pleased to tell you more about my species. More about your own culture. Okay. Solarians are considered among the brightest scientific minds of the Milky Way. We're known for our quick thinking, technological savvy, and intellectual powers of deduction. Where do you come from? Solarians originate from a world known as Rakesh. It's a tropical planet covered with oceans and rainforests. As an amphibious species, we're at home in Rakesh's lush jungles. But with our technological advancements, we can adapt to nearly any environment. We look forward to studying the wonders of Andromeda and the rich diversity our galaxy has to offer. What's Solarian history like? Cooperating with the Asari, we were the second species in the Milky Way to help form a galactic government. The Citadel Council. From time to time, we also guided other species, such as the Krogan, to better channel their natural gifts towards worthy pursuits. It's our belief that the careful application of science and intellect is the key to improving the quality of life for all. It's been my pleasure. Rest assured, the people of Andromeda have nothing to fear from Solarians. Wow, you... You sandblasted your history into cleanliness with that explanation, didn't you? By the way, look at the giant creepy eyeballs. Look at those. You can see them inside his head just sticking out. It's uh, one of the effects of doing what they did here. Like, Avina in Mass Effect 1 was a unique character model with little plates and stuff that were the suggestion of the shape of a body. It was a pretty blatant attempt to basically make Cortana, which also started off as being just a weird series of plates and stuff like that that were floating with the suggestion of a body. But now, much like more recent forms of Cortana, uh, these guys are just straight up normal bodies, but with like a filter, like they have a translucent texture and an effect on them to make them look like they're all swimmy and weird, but it's just a normal character model. The downside in this case is that you can straight up see all the little pieces that make up the body for normal gameplay. So stuff like teeth or eyes or pieces of armor all like have weird conflicting amounts of translucence and overlapping nature. So they end up kind of revealing little secrets to how the uh, character model works that they ne didn't necessarily want to uh, reveal, but that's just a, a reality of making them semi-translucent and not making a unique hologram character model. Hello there. I'm a human being. If you'd like to know more about my people, just ask. Yes, I have never heard of a human. What can you tell me about them? Okay. Good to hear. Humanity is a diverse species. You may notice different skin colors and religious beliefs among our people. Yet we don't let those differences come between us. We'd rather celebrate our diversity rather than fight over it. Yeah, that's what real life's like. Sure, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, this is the distant future of a billion years from now when all of culture is completely changed. I... no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I know that humankind came together when we discovered relays and stuff like we we made progress, but the idea that like we would all get along perfectly now? Oh no, no, no. Not even a little bit believable. No, not humans. We're bad at that. Also, he is something's freaking out about him right now. On his neck and his hair. Why is that happening? Weird, he's the only one that's doing that. Huh. Where do you come from? Humans come from a planet called Earth. It's a beautiful blue world, with everything from oceans to jungles, snowy mountain peaks to deserts. 
It's also an oasis of biological diversity. Scientists calculate Earth contains nearly 9 million unique animal and plant species. What's human history like? Humanity is a young people compared to many of the other Milky Way races. We didn't discover spaceflight until much later. But what we lack in age, we make up for with enthusiasm and a pioneer spirit. We'd like to think we can teach our fellow travelers a few new tricks. I'm glad you stopped by. Next time you see a human, ask about ice cream. It's one of the many great things we bring to Andromeda. Ice cream? Woe be upon the man who learns about any of these species via this room. Because they're not going to be very comp- it's, not, it's, it's the opposite of comprehensive. This is Ark Hyperion, one of several ships that made the long voyage from the Milky Way galaxy to Andromeda. The thousands of colonists aboard have come in peace, united by their dream of a better life in your beautiful galaxy. You need not fear their arrival. We are all citizens of the universe, eager to be your friend. This is an outpost for Milky Way colonists arriving in your galaxy. They come seeking a fresh start in Andromeda, yearning only for a land they can call home. If you encounter an outpost, feel free to drop by and say hello. Your new neighbors are eager to make friends. Holy crap. Is this satire? Is this like when you like play Fallout and then the like you get a Pip Boy cartoon man? Oh crap, can I get out of here? There we go. Alright, oh, I have a jump. <laughs> oh actually I don't have a jump right now. Right, because I don't have the jetpacks, but it lets me climb out. This feels like it's supposed to be a satire, like when you go and fall out and there's like the Pip Boy man and he's like, ha ha, look, look we're gonna comically explain this thing in the in the form of extreme violence against cartoon characters. We're so we're so smiley and weird all the time and it's really off putting, but that's the point. I think that's what we're going for here. Who's Carson? Garson. Hello there, neighbor. I'm Jan Garson, the founder of the Andromeda Initiative. I thought you might like to hear more. Okay. Great. If you're seeing this, it means our Pathfinders have done their job and made new friends in the galaxy. Welcome to the Nexus. But I want to put your mind at ease. Seeing our arcs arrive in your neighborhood probably raised some concerns. I'm happy to address them. What are you planning to do in this galaxy? Great question. I'd be worried about that too. I can assure you, we have no hostile intentions whatsoever. We're pilgrims who simply want to live in peace. We're eager to learn about new cultures, new ideas, and share our own with you. But we understand trust needs to be earned, no matter what galaxy you're in. And the initiative looks forward to doing just that. Why did you leave the Milky Way? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Many of us have a deep curiosity that needs to know what else is out there. Our own Milky Way is just one tiny speck in a universe full of mysteries. And speaking for myself, the thought of exploring those mysteries in Andromeda was a call to adventure I could not resist. Thank you for taking the time to listen. On behalf of my fellow Milky Way travelers, we couldn't be more excited about what the future holds for all of us. I'm Jean Garson, founder of Right, Jean Garson, we heard about her. Isn't she she's the cultural exchange center? Hello? Please have a look around. Yeah, I already just getting things up and running. I already kinda did that. Is this so is the intention of this place to be that if we find aliens, we like point them in here to meet learn about the different people in our culture? Our human VI is really glitching out a lot. I think that's intentional, maybe? I don't know, the, n the number of glitches he's having seems intentional at this point. Because they're just getting started. Oh, that was that was an odd one. I think... Yeah, the way that they're trying to so carefully as assuage our concerns that this place might be... meant for danger or something, is starting to make me think that maybe this is supposed to be like where we send someone like the cat to meet everyone. And learn about all the different alien species that we have or something. And that's probably why it's so horrifyingly optimistic and, un and kind of insufferable. Pathfinder, I'm glad you could stop by. Pardon the dust while we set everything up. How did you get this job? I was a sociologist in the Milky Way. 
While there were plenty of cultures to study, the books on them had all been written. There was nothing new I could add. So when I heard about the initiative, I signed up right away. The idea of meeting new people, seeing how they've evolved, adapted to life's challenges, I couldn't resist. What goes on here? The Cultural Center is a place where new races we've met can visit and exchange ideas. They can learn more about the Milky Way species, while we foster an air of cooperation and understanding. We're just getting everything ready. Hopefully it won't be long before we have our first visitors. Have you heard anything about the cat? Unfortunately, yes. Now, that's a species we won't be inviting here anytime soon. I'd hoped our encounters would be peaceful, but I suppose that was too much to ask. Thanks. Of course, our hope is that you'll make friends in the cluster and send them our way. And when you have a second, check back with me on a favor I'd like to ask. Alright, well, at, at least they're optimistic, I suppose, about what they think things should work out. Oh, that's a cool hologram. I just noticed the one on the ceiling. It's like an astrarium. You are looking at an image of the Milky Way, the original system of the colonists now arriving in Andromeda. Home to countless life forms, the Milky Way is a galaxy where friendship and peace are held in the highest regard. Those arriving in Andromeda bring with them this spirit of enlightenment. They look forward to making your acquaintance. We're glad you could yeah, that's what this is. It's meant to be for outsiders. It's so cloying and false, though, that it makes me not like us, and I am us.